On this day, let's pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is the greatest. Then Sean said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you ever need to be dragged out of bed on Mondays? At least we priests end up feeling more tired at weekends than ever because those are the days when we work the most. But somehow, I think, we all need a new impulse to start on Mondays. It seems that on Mondays we bear an extra load. Everything gets more difficult. The idea of having the whole week ahead holds us back because we haven't rested well. So, if you are having one of those days, get up, look at the sky, look at the religious image, approach your tabernacle, it's worth trying to start over. God's giving us one more day to love, to do good, to give our lives. Don't you think it's enough? Goodness is greater than we can imagine. When we want to measure goodness, viewing it from our own poor perspective, we turn into petty, calculating or even envious beings. Sean's attitude in yesterday's gospel the attitude of the youngest disciple is in line with those of the other disciples from previous Sundays. Peter's thoughts weren't God's thoughts, and the disciples argued about who was the greatest, as it happens today. All these attitudes are drawn from a background of pride, which manifests itself in different ways in these weak men, men who are as weak as each one of us. Peter stood in the way of Jesus, in his decision to suffer for our sake, pretending to know more than his master. The disciples, who didn't understand the humility of their Lord, argued about human greatness. And yesterday, Sean refused to see the goodness in others. Forgive me for going back to this, but it will help us understand that, in the end, the root of the matter is always the same pride and arrogance which can lead us to jealousy, to envying the goodness in others. That's what we will deal with this week. I suggest that we take only the first part from today's gospel, because the second part is similar to yesterday's gospel. Listen to this, it's funny. The disciples flirted with the idea of asking who was the greatest. What an idea, isn't it? I say it's funny because it contrasts so much with Jesus, with his way of being. We actually laugh to keep ourselves from crying. Is it possible that the disciples had such a hard time understanding Jesus? Yes, it is. Actually, the disciples didn't really understand who Jesus was until he appeared to them resurrected, and even that was hard for them to understand. It wasn't until they received the Holy Spirit that they could begin to understand. But that's another question, that's for another Gospel reading. The disciples' idea is the most basic idea any human being can come up with. It happens to all of us at some point. What would that idea be? To go around measuring our greatness with our human vision with our eyesight, but focusing on appearances only and failing to see our true greatness, that of a humble heart 
that doesn't boast about what's outside, but rejoices in what it holds inside. How hard it is not to boast about how good we are, isn't it? The older we get, the greater we want to feel inside, and it's quite the opposite. Do you want to be great among the greatest? That is, among all those? Make yourself small at heart, even if you are great, even if everyone praises you. That's the greatest recipe the gospel devises, to make ourselves small even in our old age, and to stop measuring everything from a human perspective, according to visible achievements, with a clapometer. We can't measure our greatness with such an instrument, according to the number of fans, followers, or likes we have, something which is very popular nowadays. Keeping a score of how many people like us is a poor measuring method. It's ephemeral, fleeting. But the truth is, many of us do care about it. Even within the church, we do some kind of marketing. We take human, poor, and fleeting measures. On a trip to the United States, Pope Francis said something both very interesting and very harsh. He said that the world often turns into a big shopping mall where we want to sell everything and we want everyone to consume what we do. We like it when people buy into the idea of what we are. What are we really seeking? Why do we believe that we are great for God? Let's ask ourselves these questions today. Are we great because of our achievements, because we have hardly failed in our lives, because you are good at the sport and you are cheered and clapped, because you have good grades at school, at university, because you are the boss of your company, because you are talented, because you do many good deeds, because of your economic progress? Let's ask ourselves those questions. Do you think we are great before God because of everything we have mentioned before? Nonsense. We are truly great for God the Father and only for Him because we are His children, His sons and daughters. We are little before our Creator. May we have a good day and may the blessings of our merciful God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain with us forever.